Dear learners and listeners, I am Dr. Shweta and today we are going to continue our discussion on understanding individual differences, the case of intelligence. But before we move on to today's topic, we must know that what we did in the last part of this lesson. In the last part of this lesson, we tried to understand the concept of intelligence, the different theoretical viewpoints of intelligence in which we talked about the factorial viewpoints and the process viewpoints of intelligence. As well as we also discussed about the different types of intelligence which is the social intelligence, the emotional intelligence and the wisdom or the practical intelligence. So moving on to the next part of the lesson, what we are going to discuss today is all about the intelligence test. We must know that what are intelligence tests, what are the different types of intelligence tests and why do we use intelligence tests that is what is the purpose of using intelligence tests. So let us begin with knowing the types of intelligence tests. So if we talk about intelligence tests then intelligence tests can be classified into verbal and nonverbal intelligence test. Nonverbal is also known as the performance test. Intelligence tests are also classified as individual tests and group tests. Let us discuss what is performance or nonverbal tests, what are the individual tests and what are the group tests. So when we say the performance tests, then as the name suggests, performance tests are actually used to assess the intellectual abilities of an individual who cannot read or write. That is those individuals who are illiterate or those individuals who have certain type of physical handicap, we administer performance test on those individuals in order to assess their intelligence. So this is what is performance test. Now I also said that individual tests and group tests are also there. So when we talk about the individual tests, as the name suggests, individual test means that the test can be administered on one person at a time, that is individual test. When we uh, talk about a group test, this means that the test can be administered simultaneously on several persons, on a number of people at the same time. So this is all about the different types of intelligence tests. Now let us discuss that what are the different types of intelligence tests that we use in order to assess the intelligence of an individual. So here comes first which is the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. Let us understand what is Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. So uh, this scale actually has 15 tests and these tests are selected to represent four major cognitive areas which means that these tests, the different subtests in Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale measures the verbal reasoning, the abstract or visual reasoning, the quantitative reasoning and short term memory of an individual. We also must know that on what age groups the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale is used. So as we have already discussed that there are certain norms that we develop for using a particular test. So the age range which is covered by Stanford Intelligence Testing is the 2 years to 18 plus years of age which means that the individuals who are falling in the 2 years to 18 plus years of age can be administered with this Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. Now how do we administer this Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale? Which means that how do we actually perform this test on, a, on an individual? So the administration of Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale involves the two stages. So the first stage is that the examiner gives the vocabulary test. And this vocabulary test helps in determining the entry level for all the remaining tests. The second stage is the stage in which the examiner establishes the basal level and a ceiling level for each test in terms of actual performance. The basal level is reached when four items on two consecutive levels are passed. When we talk about the basal level and the ceiling level, what does this actually mean? When we talk about the basal level, this means that the basal level is reached when four items on two consecutive levels are passed. 
that is the individual is able to pass the four items on the two consecutive levels of the scale. If this does not occur at the entry level, then the testing continues downward until a basal level is reached. And what is the ceiling level? The ceiling level is actually reached when three out of four or all four items on two consecutive levels are failed. That is the person's efficiency is sealed at their, that level if we want to understand it in the layman language. This is where testing with that particular test is dis discontinued for the individual. In the earlier editions of this test, the scores were interpreted in terms of intelligence quotient and the formula for in, uh, measuring the intelligence quotient is as follow. It is IQ equals to MA upon CA into 100. So what is MA and what is CA? MA actually stands for the mental age of the individual and CA stands for the chronological age of the individual. The second in the series of tests comes the Vashler scales. This is another test which is used to test the intelligence of an individual. So let us discuss what is there in this test and how this test is administered. These scales, the Vashler scales developed originally by the David Vashler deal with the group of adults, school going children and the children who are in the preschool. It is used as a measure of general intelligence also is used to aid in psychiatric diagnosis. That is, we measure the general intelligence with this test. Also, in case of the psychiatric diagnosis, we use this test as well. The current version of the test includes the Vashler Adult Intelligence Scale revised, which is VASH-R, which covers the age span of 16 to 74 years which means that the individuals falling in the age range of 16 to 74 years can be tested by using this test. The Vashler Intelligence Scale for Children 3rd edition which is WISC 3. It is intended for children aged 6 years to 16 years and 11 months. And Vashler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence revised which is WPPSI which covers the age range of 3 years to 7 years and 3 months. As I already said that there are different versions of the test. The test is administered on the adults, it is administered on the preschool children and it is also administered on the children with middle age. Out of the 17 different kinds of subtests, 8 are common to all 3 scales that is the different scales. Vashler intelligence uh, scale for uh, uh, children, for preschoolers and the Vashler Adult Intelligence Scale 3 which we just discussed. So there are uh, 17 different kinds of subtests and in these 17 different types of subtests, 8 subtests are common to all the 3 tests that is 5 verbal and 3 performance tests are common for all the uh, different versions of the Vashler scales. The information subtest is the first verbal subtest that is administered in all the three scales. That is the different scales that we just discussed. The performance subtests of these scales typically require manipulation of various objects such as puzzles, blocks or the visual scanning of printed material like pictures or symbols. That is you need to work with such objects in the performance subtest. So this was all about Vashler uh, intelligence scale. There is another uh, intelligence uh, test that is used to measure the intelligence of an individual. It is known as Raven's progressive matrices. Let us know what is there in the Raven's progressive matrices and how it is used to test the intelligence of an individual. So the Raven's progressive matrices is available in three forms and those forms differ in the level of difficulty. So first is the standard progressive matrices also known as the SPM and it is suitable for ages of 6 years and 80 years. That is the individual falling in the age category of 6 to 80 years can be administered with this test. The second is the colored progressive matrices which is also known as CPM and is used for younger children and for special groups. 
The third is the advanced progressive mattresses also known as APM and it is used with adults and adolescents. So these are the different types of uh, tests that we have in the Ravens progressive mattresses. Then comes another test which is known as draw a man test. As the name suggests in this the uh, individual who, whose intelligence needs to be tested has to draw a man. Let us discuss how do we test the intelligence of an individual with the draw a man test. It was uh, initially developed by good enough. It is a non-verbal test and it requires the test taker to draw or make a picture as I already said to make a picture of a man. And how the credit is given to the picture? The credit is given based on the inclusion of individual body parts. Whether the test taker has made all the body parts of a person, the clothing details, what kind of clothing the individual has drawn for the, uh, for the test, the proportions, the perspectives and similar features. The moderate reliability and validity have been reported for this test. In India, Pramila Fatak has developed norms for this test. So this was all about the different types of intelligence test that we use to assess the intelligence of the individual. As I mentioned in the very beginning of the program that we will dis be discussing about the different types of intelligence test and we will be knowing about the uses of intelligence test. So the part of intelligence testing is done. Now we must know that why do we use the intelligence test. So intelligence tests are basically used for different purposes like personal selection which is the selections in the organization. The intelligence tests are also used to diagnose the mental handicap of a person and they are also very much used for guidance. So these are the different uses of the intelligence tests. But there is a question. The question is we know what is intelligence, we can measure intelligence, there are different theoretical viewpoints on intelligence. But how do we explain the differences in human beings? Every human has a different intellectual capacity than the another human being. There are so many differences that exist. So let us discuss why these differences exist. Although the differences in intelligence of the different individuals are obvious and the differences are existing due to different reasons and those reasons are always debatable. In particular, different researchers have tried their best to examine the contributions of the genetic or hereditary factor and the environmental factor that actually contribute towards the variations in IQ or in the intelligence level of an individual. There are different studies that indicate that the scores of more closely related people are quite similar. The scores of intelligence test or the IQs of more closely related people are quite similar. In particular, the evidences from the studies of adopted children and of identical twins, those who were separated at early ages in life and were raised in different homes show this trend. That is, these studies show that hereditary factor has an important role to play in the IQ of an individual. There are another studies that talk about the environment. So those studies say that the environmental deprivations and the enrichment have indicated the effects of environmental factors on IQ. You must be knowing that these days parents are really very much aware of providing ample environmental opportunities to their uh, kids so that their IQ levels can be enhanced. So this indicates that environment has a role to play in the developing or in increasing the IQ of an individual. Interestingly, it has been found that females score high than males uh, with respect to verbal abilities. They are good at verbal abilities whereas males tend to score high on visual spatial abilities. Such differences may reflect the evolutionary history of human species. So here we discussed that heredity has a role to play in the uh, IQs of an individual which was indicated by the uh, scores of the uh, people who were, who were closely related to each other like the twins. 
there were different studies those who were supporting the uh, environmental factor responsible for the uh, development or for the increase in iq or decrease in iq of the individuals and here we also discussed that where the males and females differ in the iq level there is another important issue we discussed about the differences in iq because of the environmental factor because of the gender and because of the hereditary factor but there is another factor that determines the iq of an individual or that brings in the differences in the iq level of the individuals it is the cultural bias that is individual in a particular culture score high on the intelligence test as compared to the other culture why does this happen it has been argued that many of the tests have been developed in western cultural context and what happens as a result of this the children who are familiar with the western cultural context score higher on those tests than the children who are not familiar with the western cultural context in order to deal with such a difficulty efforts have been made to develop culture fair test one of the culture fair test is ketel's culture fair test of intelligence so this was all about understanding human differences the case of intelligence which is lesson 15 in your self learning material but before we end up for today's program we must recap what we did in part 1 and part 2 of this lesson we discussed that the psychological characteristics are normally distributed in the population in which we talked about the normal probability curve we also talked about the individual differences and it is practically important to know that individual difference says exist due to different reasons intelligence is viewed in many ways and it depends upon the theoretical view point from which we are uh, viewing the intelligence for example we talked about the trait approach of intelligence which says that the intelligence is a result of the different traits that an individual has so uh, we also discuss about the single or general factor of intelligence multiple factor of intelligence and the hierarchical view points of intelligence on the whole intelligence appear to be a combination of cognitive skills and knowledge we also discussed intelligence in terms of process view of intelligence where the process view considers intelligence in terms of cognitive processes there is also a realization that intelligence is of multiple kinds the notion of social and emotional intelligence have opened new areas of research that is there is another intelligence that exists other than the in intellectual intelligence which is the emotional intelligence and which is the social intelligence and these intelligences are also important for the survival of the ind individual special tests have been developed for children and handicapped this we discussed in the portion where we were discussing about the different types of intelligence test and these intelligence tests are often used in personal selection guidance and counseling and diagnose of mental retardation there are different indian psychologists who have adapted several tests and are often used in personal selection guidance diagnosis of mental retardation and research the indian psychologist have adapted several tests but much is still desired that is as we discussed that many of the tests are based on the western cultural context so the indian psychologist are also adapting Uh, the test as per the cultural norms of the uh, present culture psychologists have also developed test to assess the achievement aptitude and personality of the individual i hope you could understand well that what is intelligence what are the different theoretical view points of intelligence and how do we measure the intelligence of an individual also we could know that what are the different types of intelligence testing why do we use intelligence test and why do people differ in their intelligence with this i hope that you have understood the topic well i end up for today's program thank you